Hey, what's going on there, folks? Uh, welcome back here to another update on this uh, Wednesday night. It is January 10th, 2024, about 11.08 p.m. here, California time. And the uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's see what we got. Looks like a little 0.9 here across the West Coast. Uh, we did see some interesting activity out here in the Pacific uh, just a short time ago. 5.3 coming in. Uh, away from the plate boundary, a little odd one down here, to say the least. Uh, this earthquake coming in from the USGS as well. 10 kilometer defaulted depth there for that earthquake. Uh, that struck here just before 9, uh, my time. Uh, now this area has not seen a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. Uh, historically, that is. Uh, if we turn on the key, this is the last, well, since about 1900 to 2015 here. Uh, a handful of smaller quakes around the region, uh, not, and it looks like maybe a handful of smaller quakes here as well. But uh, goodness, I can't recall the last time I've seen an earthquake like that, uh, one of these intraplate earthquakes away from the plate boundary. So Pacific Plate uh, definitely shown some uh, interesting activity out here. Uh, we did see a little bit of movement also in the Mariana Islands area. Um, that earthquake coming in as a 5.0 earlier this afternoon. Fairly shallow there at about 10 kilometers, also way across the Pacific here along the South America region of 5.0 coming in 115 kilometers deep uh, there into the uh, Peru area underneath this region. As uh, far as the activity up north here into the states, our typical zone seeing the typical earthquake activity out there in the oil fields. As uh, far as Southern California goes, uh, getting a handful of earthquakes uh, around the San Jacinto Fault Zone as typical. And a little bit of activity out in the uh, Pacific here off the coast of Malibu. I've got a 2.4 coming in uh, earlier this evening as well. Minimal movement around Ridgecrest, but we're getting that, lin that little linear fashion of uh, earthquake activity here across this range. Kind of goes up against the uh, mountain ranges here in Utah. Uh, just a handful of smaller quakes, but it is a... Uh, a little bit of stress building out here across the west coast, I feel. Uh, up into the uh, Nevada area, handful of earthquakes up there as well. Let's see what we got for the uh, 2.5 map and above. Well, we got a 2.9 way off, the, well, not off the coast, but uh, yeah, maybe just short, it's small distance off the coast for a 2.9 point sur area uh, south of Pacific Grove. 6.2 kilometers deep here off of the uh, uh, this coast range fault on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. As uh, far as anything else going on here across Northern Cal, typical zones out here in the uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field. And uh, we've got one little earthquake up in Oregon. This this one coming in early this morning near Plush, Oregon. Uh, 2.3, very shallow out here. I'm sure there's some uh, old volcanic uh, activity out here. The Lone, Gro Lone Grave Butte. Goodness. All right, uh, See, not a whole lot going on in the Pacific Northwest. Only a handful of smaller quakes, it looks like. Uh, let's double check the trimmer map here and see what we have going on. 37 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, a little bit in Se uh, underneath Seattle and a little bit here in Northern California underneath this area down into the subduction zone itself. Um, nothing big for now. Uh, the rest of the area... Alaska, still seeing some movement up and down the area here of the Aleutian Trench. Uh, aside from that, look at the 2.5 map and above there. Shows a handful of earthquakes, no swarming going on there. And uh, across this area, it looks like we're just uh, looking at a standstill of earthquake activity. But there is some movement taking place, just a little bit smaller than what the USGS reports out here uh, in terms of their threshold for reporting. Uh, quite a few twos in the typical zones. Got one earthquake here in Australia, 2.7. And as uh, far as New Zealand goes out here, looks like a little 3.2. But goodness, this is awfully quiet. Look at that. Uh, out here across the Tonga area southward. And uh, I guess we'll just kind of have to watch that. A little 5.3. Just an odd quake, to say the least. Uh, South America region there, as I mentioned... Uh, the movement underneath the Peru area and a handful of uh, smaller quakes there into the uh, Chile area down south. Um, far as the Hawaii area goes, well, 
Looks like some earthquake activity occurring there. Nothing big. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in to the area of interest around the Kilauea volcano, which is showing a handful of earthquakes here in the uh, last 24 hours. One within the last hour here for a 2.1. Very shallow there at the Lava Lake area. Um, I want to see what's going on here. We didn't get a chance to uh, catch the update from the HVO uh, this morning, but it does look like they put out an update. A little bit late, but better late than never. Uh, Kilauea Volcano is not erupting, and uh, it's still the same reading out here. Uh, there was about eight small magnitude earthquakes there, less than the uh, M2 range, recorded beneath the caldera. Um, periods of increased shallow seismicity can be expected to continue during the repressurization of the Summit Magma Reservoir, uh, which has been ongoing since the end of the September 2023 eruption. Um, so earthquake activity not quite up to par in terms of the amount that we're looking for prior to an eruption, but that uh, that tilt is way up there in terms of inflation. So we got a lot of inflation going on there across the summit region of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, here's the UWE station taking a nice sharp turn upwards here in the um, last day or so. This is in the last two days. And uh, we'll see that visible here on the 30-day chart. I guess that was just our little deflation event here. Now we're going back up and probably continue to rise here. I don't know for how long, um, but we'll watch for signs, right? We'll watch for uh, earthquake activity in a, uh, you know, in a more active pattern uh, before we see the uh, fissure activity open up out here or uh, continuing um, to fill up the lava lake. It's hard to say exactly at this point which one's going to take place, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. <clears throat> uh, as far as the Iceland area goes out here, um, getting windy out there. Kind of hear my wind chimes. Uh, Iceland seen a, a little bit of activity here. Looks like a 3.7. That was from earlier this morning. Let's double check the Iceland site here uh, for any signs of eruption activity up there as well. There's a 3.8 fairly recent earthquake uh, a ways away from the um, Grindavik area, which, uh, by the way, is really showing nothing out here in terms of earthquake activity, but that does not mean everything's over. Uh, this activity of, of interest here is a long ways away, but over here across <clears throat> some different volcanoes uh, in a different rift zone over here, in this portion of Iceland. Uh, no noticeable changes there across these volcanoes um, for now, uh, but we'll continue to watch that. That earthquake coming in very shallow, 0.1 uh, for that 3.8 earthquake. Uh, aside from that, uh, you know, it's definitely been somewhat active out here in terms of broad scale movement. Uh, we'll continue to watch that and report back on, ooh, did they just upgrade that? Looks like they did. Just as I was speaking here, they upgraded this earthquake to a 4.4. You guys seen that, right? Just happened to back out for a second and the circle got bigger and a different color and a different magnitude. So 4.4 4, uh, looks like the, um, let's see here. There's that seismograph station right here that picked up the, uh, oh man, it's going to do that again, huh? Uh, we can see it at least on here a little bit. Uh, there's that 4.4 shown up uh, very nicely there within the last hour or so. Uh, prior to that, definitely a handful of earthquakes out there as well. Uh, but that four-pointer definitely put a squash there on all those previous earthquakes. Uh, it does look like we're getting some type of uh, elevated movement across this area. We'll continue to watch that uh, for any changes there at uh, any volcanoes uh, within this region. Let's see, did the uh, EMSC pick it up? Doesn't look like it, but uh, definitely the uh, station there in Iceland is reporting a 4.4. Uh, and again, Grindavik right now, just a very mellow activity out here. Not a whole lot going on in terms of earthquake activity, but the inflation Obviously, the inflation uh, has been continuing. Let's see what we got here for the latest data. Here's the vertical displacement up in MM. 
and I don't see any sharp downturn. I don't see any sharp uplift. Just kind of steady as she goes, uh, you know, on, on the rising here. Um, so we continue to watch that. Doesn't look like anything uh, is going to take place immediately. Obviously, we would see elevated earthquake activity there uh, across the region prior to any fissure activity opening up. Uh, no latest, no update here from the uh, Icelandic Met Office. This was put out yesterday and just kind of chatted about uh, increased risk of an eruption in the coming days. They don't really say, well, they do mention about the um, the uh, deformation um, the calculations from models relying on deformation measurements indicate that the amount of magma accumulated in the reservoir beneath Savart Singi has reached a level comparable to the volume that led to the formation of the magma uh, conduit on the subsequent eruption on December 18th. So therefore, at that level, they believe that there's an increased risk of an eruption here in the coming days because we've reached that level or have, uh, we probably exceeded it uh, by now in terms of the inflation out here compared to the inflation back uh, prior to the eruption in December. All right, uh, let's check out space weather activity here. Uh, currently getting some flaring activity from a far side sunspot here, it looks like, uh, which is just barely visible now out there on the western limb. C2.3 coming in. Uh, we do have numerous sunspots directly facing the Earth and a couple about ready to uh, see, uh, about ready to say see you later. Uh, these were, they they look like they were um, going to bring some hope in terms of uh, solar weather uptick. But uh, I tell you what, it basically disintegrated out here as far as these sunspots go. So we got uh, at least a couple sunspots here to look at. I don't see anything um, of great value out here in terms of to watch out for. Uh, we do have another sunspot region here on the southeastern limb that's coming around, currently unnamed. But uh, we'll continue to watch all this and uh, check for some flaring here and there. Uh, right now, only a 99% well, chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 5% chance or so. But there's not a whole lot of uh, potential out there in terms of strong, large flaring. And uh, not a whole lot here on the Aurora forecast either. Uh, severe weather. We do have another severe weather day down here uh, in portions of a region that just got through with some severe weather out in uh, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana area. Uh, this is for Thursday, tomorrow, my time tomorrow. Uh, it may already be Friday or <laughs> may already be Thursday where you live. I'm already getting ahead, trying to scoot towards Friday already. Um. So this is for Thursday, an enhanced risk here uh, with a uh, large 10% hatched area. That 10% hatched area indicating the potential 10% uh, or greater. I've seen EF2 to EF5. That's the largest tornado there, EF5, within about 25 miles of a point. So somewhat serious um, potential out here tomorrow. And that also includes a rather large 5 and 2% zone. So if you're out here within any of these zones here tomorrow, stay weather aware. Uh, keep your eyes in the sky, and of course, make sure you got a weather radio out there. Uh, decent chance of some wind damage as well, uh, whether it's uh, whether it's straight line winds uh, from the inflow or outflow. Uh, there is that damage of seeing uh, some decent wind gusts. Hell potential out here as well. Um, Texas and Oklahoma—they always seem to get that large hell. Uh, there is a significant severe potential out here in the hatched area. Uh, indicating that there's a 10% or greater probability of seeing some 2-inch diameter hail falling out of the sky on Thursday within about 25 miles of a point. Um, don't want to be underneath that when uh, it starts throwing off uh, these large hailstones. Not a whole lot here on um, the seismographs. Let me check out Yellowstone here. Kind of jumped over that. See if we got anything to chat about here. Um, some very small, spiky earthquake activity here in the last couple hours. Those are very small quakes, uh, but aside from that, really nothing showing up here. Uh, some of these starting to notice which ones pick up a lot of wind, and you know what is outside interference um, on these graphs here compared to uh, earthquake activity. But uh, 
At Yellowstone, it's pretty quiet in terms of uh, you know the potential that it could have. Uh, let's see what else. Is there anything else going on in the volcano world out here? As far as the USGS monitored, doesn't look like it. So we'll uh, check back here tomorrow on our Thursday. Make sure you guys have a uh, have a good night. Oh man, what do we got here again? Little earthquake off on the San Bernardino Mountains. This is a range that uh, keeps making me nervous when I see earthquake activity out here. Well, watch this here pretty closely. There's only one earthquake right now, a little 1.5, uh, but it's in a zone here where, uh, you know, the pressure is the greatest here across the southern branch of the San, and San Andreas Fault. Uh, strain's been building up here for a long time. And um, a lot of times we'll see these little swarms out here on just off the uh, southern branch here on the North American side of the plate boundary. And that there just tells me that things are, you know, kind of migrating in terms of um, stress out here uh, amongst the plate boundary, getting this little um, movement of pressure, so to speak. And uh, just kind of watch it. No major swarms going on, but I just happen to notice that little quake right now. So just be safe. Stay, uh, stay on guard out there. All right. Um, I am out of here, folks. think I'm going to get me some sleep, and uh, we'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow at least my tomorrow time looks like uh yeah emsc finally picked up on that as a 4.6 goodness did they upgrade it uh let me double check and see here it's a decent little earthquake there oh these guys are still showing a 4.3 um well it was a 4.4 so it looks like a little downgrade i guess we'll see um Here's a GPS uh, displacement charts here. Not really seeing any huge vertical displacement here in the last couple months. Uh, periods of uh, elevated activity, but it doesn't look like we're seeing anything um, in terms of uh, huge uplift. This looks like it goes back uh, over a year or so. Gradual uplift. Uh, but we'll, like I said, we'll continue to watch it. Any activity out here across these rift zones could definitely stir up activity uh, in terms of volcanic potential in this area all right i'm out of here have yourself a good night we'll catch you guys back out here uh, uh tomorrow sometime take care folks <laughs>